like the way you make me laugh. In the early 90s, Sprite was an also-ran brand in the competitive soft drink category. Their focus groups with teenagers were designed to find out what was wrong. What we found by talking to teens is that they had seen so much advertising that they were on overload and became very cynical about um, that traditional approach to advertising. Hi, I'm Grant Hill, professional basketball player for the Detroit Pistons. Then they launched this ad campaign aimed at teens which pokes fun at marketing itself. Because it's the only drink with that cool, crisp, refreshing taste that satisfies even my manliest thirst. There was really no one in the market at the time that was saying, discount it all, don't believe it, it's all <laughs> BS, and we know that you know that, and you're smarter than everyone else. So it, it put them in a position to feel like we understood them. So that they were feeding back to us, you know, Sprite understands me, and Sprite is one, you know, it's really one of us. It worked for a while, but soon Sprite's own focus groups revealed that kids were getting wise to this anti-marketing marketing campaign. They had Grant Hill telling you not to listen to some celebrity telling you to drink a beverage. Right. Well, that's what you're doing. You're listening to Grant Hill telling you to drink Sprite. Right. I don't know how much they probably paid all those stars to come on and say, don't listen to what a star says. <laughs> So Sprite crossed an entirely new threshold, into the innermost sanctum of teen culture, where they cloaked themselves in genuine cool. Hip-hop, for us, became the sort of vehicle or the lens for us to get to teens and talk to them in a credible way. Um, and the way we did that was to um, develop relationships with artists. They all of a sudden put their arm around that kid that was drinking Sprite, and so we understand you, we recognize you, we... We want to be part of your life and not just please drink our product. It did, they almost weren't even selling the product. They were selling the fact that they understood the culture. They were selling a lifestyle, and I think that's why Sprite's been so successful and one of the leaders in terms of reaching youth. Former record executives John Cohn and Rob Stone run a New York marketing firm called Cornerstone. Their specialty is under-the-radar marketing. For instance... Cornerstone hires kids to log into chat rooms and pose as just another fan of one of their clients. And that's what the focus group is about. They also recruit incoming freshmen to throw parties where they pass out promotional material to their classmates. Yeah, if we're, um, you know, maybe we've got a bunch of promo Buster Rhyme CDs and that would be great to give out at the, at the, uh, the hip-hop concert. Cornerstone helps Sprite tap a network of radio DJs and hip-hop artists to smuggle their message into the world of kids. The days of developing cute campaigns or whatever, don't, they don't work anymore. You have to really get involved in what their culture is. You have to understand where they're coming from. You have to think how they think. It worked. Thanks to the teens who buy it, Sprite is now the fastest-growing soft drink in the world. Sprite invited us to a kickoff party for their new website, Sprite.com. Scores of kids were paid to show up and revel in the sounds and styles of urban authenticity. While we were there, some of the biggest acts in rap music appeared on stage under the company logo. Here it was, the ultimate marriage of a corporation and a culture. Sprite and hip-hop had become one and the same, each carrying the other to its audience. Sprite has really become an icon. It's not just associated with hip-hop. It, it's, it's really a part of it. As much as baggy jeans and sneakers, Sprite has become an icon in hip-hop culture. Is it nostalgic to think that when we were young it was any different? <laughs> 